So here we're going to look at an example of accelerated motion and uh, see how it is that we can uh, use this trick of UVAST in order to solve something. So I've just written out these four equations of motion because we might uh, need them. In fact, we're going to need one of them. So let's take a look at uh, some example we could do. Uh, this could be just about anything. Um, I could have, well, I was using the example of driving before, so maybe I'll do that. So you're, uh, you're driving your car driving in a car. And the question is, how long does it take to stop? That might be the question. Okay, how long does it take to stop? Now we're missing some information. And I, I don't want you to think that physics questions are just, are just uh, you know, you have to be given a bunch of information on what to do. I mean, these are dynamic situations. So try to imagine you're in your car, we're assuming you're driving, and there's clearly some information missing here. So try to think, what information do I need to know uh, before I can know how long does it take to stop? I mean, here I'm asking for time, even though I said how long. That's a common thing that they like to do, right? I mean, uh, we use some terms that aren't always maybe clear. So in this case right here, I'm driving in a car. I might want to know how fast am I going? And then as far as how long does it take to stop? Well, maybe I need to know either how far I drive before I stop, or maybe I need to know, you know how hard do I press on the brake pedal if I'm driving and I try to stop. So we're going to be given some information. So um, let's say I want to know the, uh, the initial speed. So how fast am I going uh, initially? Well, that will be given. So let's just say, uh, so the initial speed will be given as, um, it doesn't really matter, but let's just say something like 21 meters per second. And then we need to know something else. So here, uh, let's assume that we know how much the acceleration is. So in this case, I know sort of how hard I'm pressing on the brake pedal. So in this case, my acceleration could be, let's say 3.2 meters per second squared. So in that case, I've actually got everything I need in order to solve this. Okay, so I've got an initial speed. So you just have to try to imagine this. Physics questions are actually nice because uh, you can often imagine something happening. And that's what I like about this. So in this case, I'm imagining I'm driving in my car at a speed of 21 meters per second. That's pretty fast, right? 21 meters in one second. So I'm moving along. And then I slam on the brakes. And when I do that, I know that my acceleration is this. You may, by the way, want to compare that with the acceleration due to gravity, uh, which is what we call 1g. And that's actually 9.81 meters per second squared. So I'm sort of slowing down uh, something on the order of, um, well, something close to one third, the acceleration due to gravity. So here I'm actually really slamming on the brakes. So maybe I see, I don't know, a deer in front of me that I don't want to hit. So I slam on the brakes. The question is, you know, how long does it take to stop? In other words, I'm looking for the time it takes to stop. So the very first thing then is, uh, well, to look at, do I have uniformly accelerating motion? Yep, the very fact that I have acceleration implies uh, accelerated motion. And it's uniform, right? it's not changing. This value isn't any different. It's always going to be 3.2 uh, while I'm slowing down. And then so what we can do is use this little trick that I was telling you about called UVAST. So what I like to do is actually write down, you know, like a little table here and say, well, all right, I want UVAST. I want to account for them. The key thing, though, when dealing with questions of this type, this is the, the most important uh, thing to remember, is to keep track of which way is forward and which way is backwards, or which way is up, which way is down. I always make things that are right or up. Those are positive because I like to think about graphs. You know, when I'm looking at a graph, things going to the right are positive or up is positive. If it goes to the left, it's negative, And if it's down, it's negative. So that's usually the distinction that I like to make. Now, when I do this, I haven't been told which way it's going, but I can assume something. And if something goes opposite direction to another thing, then I know that it has to be negative sign. I'm going to show you this in context in a second here. 
So u, u is my initial speed, and let's assume that you're driving this way. So this is my situation here. I'm driving in my little car. You'll see in a second why it is that I'm not an artist. Uh, I don't know, I guess I need my car to go like this. Here we go. So I'm in my little car here, and I'm initially going with a certain speed, right? I'm initially driving, but then I slam on the brakes until eventually I stop. So the initial speed I can say is positive. 21. Now when I write down UVAST, I usually, I'm a little bit lazy, I usually don't, um, I don't put in the units. And that's because, in, in my own mind at least, anything that goes here has proper units. That means only meters per second are allowed here and here. Only meters per second squared are allowed here. Only meters are allowed here. And only seconds are allowed here. Which means if I get a question where I don't have those units, I change them before I put in put them into here. So I actually uh, will convert them. So in this case I have 21 and I'm saying it's positive. The final speed, I haven't been told that, but it's implied. Right? How long does it take to stop? Stop implies that when I'm finished this situation, I'm not moving. So that means this is zero. Now my acceleration, I'm told it's 3.2. So I might be tempted to just say 3.2. This is a distinction here. This is really important. There's going to be something important right here. This is actually wrong. Try to think why. What's missing here? If I made this really 3.2, that means I'm driving this way, and if I have an acceleration of positive 3.2, that means I'm going to start flying forward. You know, I'm accelerating. I've slammed on the gas. Maybe I have nitrous oxide, or maybe, I don't know, I have a rocket strapped to the back of my car, and I'm really going forward. That's not what I want. So how do I mathematically do the opposite? Remember, if I'm going this way, it's like my acceleration is the opposite direction. So I'm going to throw a negative sign on this. That's going to make all the difference. What's my displacement when I stop? I don't know. But I actually don't care. So this is don't know, don't care. And t, that's the time it takes to stop. And that's what I wanted. So I usually put a star. That's just my convention, okay? So when I'm solving questions, you're gonna see me use this. So I put a uh, star by the thing I want, question mark with anything I don't know and maybe don't care, maybe I need it, maybe I don't. Let's just see. The good news is, once I've dealt with this, I can reduce this to just a shopping list. Now I'm just looking for a situation where, or, or an equation, where I have a T in it, and I try to find something that doesn't have an S. Because if it has S, in other words, displacement, I'm going to need an equation. I'm going to need to find that. So that's why just from there, I've got my list of four equations. I could use this first one. I could use, well, actually, that's probably the one I should use. It probably should use V equals U plus AT. That's probably the best one to use, right? Because this one has an S in it. This one has it. This one has it. Now, does it mean if I use this, I'd be wrong? No. It just means that I would then first have to find S somehow. I'd have to find my displacement. In this case, though, I'm going to try to take the shortest way to do this. So I think I'm going to use this equation here. It really helps if you're on an exam uh, to actually write down what you're using. So V equals U plus AT. All right, that's the equation I'm going to use. Well, then what I do is I just go ahead and solve it. So I know that V is zero, so that cancels out, that crosses out. I want T, and if I have T, that means I can, well, I can first of all move the U over, so that becomes a minus U, and then I have to divide by A. Now I've done the steps, I've done two steps all in one. If you take your time with algebra, you'll see if you go zero equals U plus AT, you can get T on its own by first moving this over, it makes it minus U, and then you want to divide by A to get rid of the A. So that's how you do this. So this is the equation I'm going to use. That means I just need to plug in uh, the values. So in this case, negative uh, whatever u is, so that's 21. Divide that by a, which is negative 3.2. Good thing I put in the negative, because if I didn't, I'd end up with a negative time. And as far as we know, you can't have that. Well, not in at least any simple, realistic situation. So now I'm going to use my trusty calculator. I'm going to say negative 21. Divide that by negative 3.2. And I get an answer of uh, 3.6, roughly, um, me, uh, seconds. 
So it'll take me 6.6 .6 seconds in order to slow down from an initial speed of 21 meters per second down to a speed of zero. In other words, down to being stopped. So this is how we can solve these kinds of questions. Now this trick doesn't just uh, work for this example, it works for all of them. So anytime I see accelerated motion, I right away start thinking UVAST.